Kelly. Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Patriot Radio News Hour. Oh yeah, it's Jack Daniels Friday and this show is brought to you by the Patriot Trading Group. We offer gold and silver to the huddled masses. Call us at 1-800-951-0592 and get you some. Or you can head out to the website at allamericangold.com, updated daily with news to comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. We're live from the Hole in the Ceiling Studios in beautiful, vacant, and I mean vacant, Deer Valley, Arizona, on this eighth day of May 2020 in the year of our Lord. This show reverberates around the world. You can listen to us on YouTube at and podcasts, uh, the Patriot Radio News Hour channel. We're live on 1010 AM Family Values Radio here in Phoenix, KXXT. And welcome to all our listeners, the children of the corn at 1360KHNC.com. I'm joined with Joe Jaquint, president and CEO of Patriot Trading Group and my partner at 1360KHNC. And a family member and an all-around good guy. Good morning, Joe. How you doing? Happy Friday, baby. Yeah, you yeah. too. Yeah. You made it. I'm so happy. I limped in here. <laughs> I don't know. I got up early this morning, though, so beautiful. God, the weather's just stunning. I like the low hundred days, and it gets down into the 60s and 70s at night up in the foothills, and it's just beautiful, beautiful. So my rescue dog, Duke, he's half basset hound and half dachshund. <laughs> so I know. Try You try to figure out which is which. So I rescued him a few years ago. He hated everybody. He kept trying to run away and he'd crack a door. He was just an escape artist. He's got a BB in him. Um, he's got throat trauma from being kicked. I mean, he really had a rough life. And he's about, oh, six or seven when I got him. And now the Arizona National Guard couldn't get him out. You can leave the front door open. Come out of the house yeah. immediately. You can lay a trail of bacon out to the driveway. He's like, no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> He sleeps next to me on the floor, and now he's got this annoying habit now. He's a sunrise dog. He's like a rooster. So, you know, the sun starts coming up at 4.30. It starts getting light, and I hear the little, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> So that's how my days have been starting. So I hope you're all doing well. They're trying to open up the country. We need to get back to work, and we need to get things going. How about this? Disneyland Shanghai. Think about that. Think about dis- just the. What does that conjure and visions for you, Joe? A bunch of little Asian kids running around. I have no comment. It's Jack Daniels Friday, <laughs> and I don't feel that I'm able to make an appropriate comment on that question. <laughs> I mean, who goes to they, they They open up for pre-sales. I guess they open next week. They sell out only well, 30%. Yeah, right. So think about this. So uh, Disneyland, you know, I don't know how many – 80,000 people, 100,000 people you know, a day, and now they've got to operate with only 20 or 30 percent of those people, right? The math just, I'm doing math. That doesn't seem to add up to me. Well, let's have a business class, you gotta shall turn we? all the rides on, right? All this stuff got to be on. The, you got to have the employees come back. The restaurants can't be nearly as full. The rides, you know, I guess, I guess if you're on Space Mountain, what, like, okay, you you sit in this car, uh, that car's empty. Uh, you sit here, the next two cars are empty, and then what? The car comes into the station, and then all the Disney employees come out with their little disinfectant squirt guns. I mean, how does that work? I don't know. So I mean, here you got you know little snot nosed Asian kids running around. There's uh, bubble chewed bubble gum and. Uh, shards of vomit on the rides i mean, I mean do you get yeah. on that i mean is this what I, I, you do right i don't right well, how, how does that work so here's the economics of it so so what do we figure out you know this so disneyland pass here in in anaheim is for the day a couple well. hundred bucks a couple hundred dollars now yeah. if you can only let a third of the people in this is where inflation is coming from i want you people to follow along at home now stop not drinking it's not drink along with eric just yet it's jack daniels friday but just ask yourself this. If you were Walt Disney's uh, family member, cast-off family member, and you're like, well, how are we going to price tickets? If we can only let a third of people in. We, when we were full, we were at $200. Ooh, I didn't think hmm, about that. So this is how that. inflation comes from. You want to stay in business? The new e-ticket, 600 bucks, baby, if you want to get in. Plus the people, now they're going to have to take – they got a real wage problem in this country. It's already started. So – there's Dagan McDowell, 
the Billy Bob NASCAR financial genius that they put her on. I can't stand her. She was an anti-Trumper, and they told her, you better straighten up or you're going to get fired off Fox Business News. So she, she hates Trump, but she hides it. But she happened to talk about they can't get anyone to go back to work. They had a temporary staffing gal on and says, yeah, we're getting the people, and they all say they're going to go to work, and they won't show up. Well, here's why. The average pay for a worker, saying Walmart, car wash, restaurant, you just pick it. Okay, right now for a week is about 310 bucks when you work a 32-hour week. So, unfortunately, the, un, the the average for not working. So, in other words, you go to work, you put your life on the line. If you're a believer that the virus is that contagious, you put your life on the line for 300 or even 400 or even 500 a week. If you stay home right now, the average unemployment check is 761. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. I could go to work now. Deal with bull crap. Have to have my mask on. Spray people down. And 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 uh, now they're saying that the retail employees are supposed to enforce social distancing. Right? Oh, now I got to go yell at a guy and his kid because they're standing too close to each other. Or I can stay at home and make more money. Right. For a while now. For quite some time. I think it's through July. Through I July. Think, I think. So here's the issue. So you ask, will they go back to work? Well, they're not. So, you know, you look at just the Tyson plant. They for, they forced Tyson to reopen. You realize they had 900 corona cases? 900 at Tyson Foods. Woo. But I guess when they all come back, they'll be, uh, what, they'll have the immune antibodies I guess the chickens will, won't get it either. So, speaking of chickens, have a chicken sandwich and a shot of Jack, and we'll be back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for staying with us all week. Thanks for staying with us, some of you people, for a quarter century. Uh, we really appreciate the support and the respect, and we learn from you as you learn from us. A lot of the things that we uh, expose or expel or expound on on this network. Uh, is uh, material and thoughts and knowledge that we've extrapolated from the very intelligent listening audience, a.k.a. customers. So um, we try to finan- you know, concentrate on financial end of things, but you know, you got to follow the dollar and follow politics, and everything's kind of going hand in hand today. So unemployment, Joe, what do you think of that? So what Well, you know, we had the government number out this morning, and, and of course... Uh, they wanted you to believe, oh, it was better than expected. You know, we only had 20 million people out of work. And one of the things they don't tell you, and this is part of the problem when you have uh, a, a media outlet, because where do you go for these numbers? You don't go to your local news media. They don't cover this. You go to CNBC. You go to Fox Business. You go to the Stock Channel now. That's where you go for this number. Or you go to the Wall Street Journal. And you got to remember. All of the money, all of the revenue that they garner comes from companies that do what? They sell you stocks or they sell you bonds. They sell you paper investments, right? So they're going to give you the best news. These guys that are on the TV, they're not reporters, right? They're guys that they or gales that look good on the TV, Right, and can read a teleprompter. That's their job. They read teleprompters. That's that's what they do for a living, you know. And, and uh, Sean Hannity's a prime example, right? Sean Hannity, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a college degree. Not that you need a college degree, but he's a good speaker. That's what is required. You, he looks good. He can talk well. Right. I knew, I knew a guy had a business card and said HSD was the abbreviation behind this. And the guy was very wealthy, Dick Stager up in Washington. And I asked him one day, I go, what's this HSD on your business card? He said, high school dropout. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bingo, right? Not that, not that that means a whole lot, but what I'm getting at is when they collect this data, they don't take the whole month of April. Right? This, is, this was an April number. So first, first Friday in May is normally when you get the jobs number. And uh, yet the first Friday technically was last Friday, but they don't do it then when it's only one day, blah, blah, blah. So here's the number. They only took the first two weeks. Oh, my God. So April. you got 20 million jobs. In two so, weeks. yeah, they're, they're, they're light another 10 million. And they know that. 
But of course, they don't want you to know that because they want to tell you, oh yeah, see, it's 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 better, right? Every number's got to be better than. But here's what was what I found interesting. Not that because I already knew that, and I was expecting the number. It was what they said was the good news inside of the numbers. That's what was a slap in the face this morning. They tried to tell us when the Wall Street rally and going, the numbers were much better than expected. And I'm looking at it going, yeah, yeah, that's that's really a good number. The state of Montana, North, South Dakota, Iowa, Kansas, all filed for unemployment in the same two weeks. You know, so, and, and you, you look at the, the, the whole thing, but here's what they said. Here was the really good number, according to the idiot box this morning. 70% of the people being laid off think that their layoff is only temporary. Right. That was the good news. That's the good news? Okay. Well, let's hope it is. I mean, nobody but knows. what about the other 30%, right? I mean, wait a minute. They, that, they know that they're not going back to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then of the 70% that think they're going back to work, my guess is at least 20 to 30% of those people just aren't that smart. What does the ADP stand for, then? Is that what they call that? The oh, they, ADP they, that's report? the Wednesday number. That, was that, the that Wednesday is the, number. That's a non, the non government uh, report. Moody's Analytics does the ADP got it, report. Got it, got it, got they, it. They so. call, what they do is they call the quote unquote hiring managers and they ask them, uh, are you planning on hiring anybody? soon and if you say yeah okay well we'll put you in the plus we'll put you in the plus do they still do the purchasing managers one Have oh yeah that? yeah yeah they don't do uh, the numbers are so bad they stop they just don't report them anymore they used to call them are you gonna buy anything well i'm gonna buy some paper clips okay good. okay we'll, we'll put you down so. yeah <laughs> the institute of supply management yeah they they say here in tempe so if you only can run at a third capacity does that mean you have to triple your prices every restaurant any, every anybody that's open for business. See, and this is the part that that scares me about what they were trying to tell you was good news today. Right. Was which was hey, seventy percent of these people are probably going to get their job back. Here's the reality, because when you look at the layoffs, obviously hospitality, restaurants, bars devastated. Okay, so let, let's just take the hotel. Okay, we reopen. Right. Okay, great. We're open for business now. Well. We normally would be running at 80 or 90, 95% occupancy if I'm a hotel. Well, now you're at 30. Hey, I know you were working full time, but now I only need you to work 20 hours a week. Right. Do you give up your unemployment right. for and that? Those of you, hey, I've got, I've got, I don't know, 10 house keepers. Hey, at thirty per, at ninety percent, I need ten. At thirty percent, hey, I only need three of you. The other seven gotta go, right? You know, at a restaurant. Okay, we're back open now. Monday, Arizona restaurants open back up. The volume from where it was in in February to where it's going to be on Monday, you're probably looking at volumes. A good place is going to probably be down fifty percent. A bad place. It's probably going to be down 80%. And those people that came back to work are not making, because you got to remember, how do they get tips? It's a big part of their income. I think we're going to see this this crazy cycle here uh, 90 days from today, or, well, 90 days from, you know, because the whole country's opening here in the next two, three weeks. Right. 90 days later, we're going to see a massive wave of closure. I mean, massive. Why? Because the revenues, you can't, you can't make the money. We talked about Disney. Hey, Disney, how long can Disney go with only letting 30% of capacity into their theme parks? Right? Well, there's the question. Do you triple the prices, or does the government make up the difference in lost business? That's a great question. Disney, they'll probably, they'll probably more stimulus for all the restaurants. They're going to have to, they're just going to have to support and uh, throw the, subrogate and, the money and, in and for the Disney difference. Disney can go and borrow money, right? I mean, eventually, it's going to be over. People will loan Disney money. They'll know, hey, 2021, 2020, whenever we get the vaccine, you guys will be back. We'll loan you billions. You're fine. The guy that owns the local bar, the guy that owns uh, one hotel or three hotels, right, he ain't getting a loan. Right. They're not bailing him. Hey, don't, unless it's a hand you money, a government handout, no one's letting in that guy any money. Well, if you're not making your house payment or rent payments and you've got stimulus checks and 
and uh, PPP, and you got everything. I guess there's a lot, I mean, as I've said, there's a lot of money out there, and they they're going to monetize it. We still have now the 750 billion. Nancy Pelosi said is now over two trillion. Oh yeah, well we told you that. Yeah, that's so now yeah. this one's over two trillion. I'm going to also bring up another thing. So if you're collecting unemployment. You don't show up on the people not working, the number of Americans not working. This is you're retired, you're too young, you're not on any unemployment or anything like that. We've now crested the 100 million mark. We now have 100, and I think it's 103 million Americans not in the workforce. Not in we, the workforce. we almost got a third of the country not in the workforce. Then you throw in another, well, they're owning up to about 33 million people on unemployment. So you do the math. That's 135, 136 million people not in the workforce. Half the country's not working. Lori and I got $1,000. I've got my eye on a new Ferrari. <laughs> I couldn't afford the oil. My stimulus wouldn't pay for an oil change on the Ferrari. <laughs> we need more stimuli. Get it out there. And the stimuli, well, let me tell you, it's getting a little creepy. Markets are now beginning, began pricing the negative U.S. rate environment for the first time yesterday, a place the Fed is determined not to go as investors are grappling with the economic consequences of the new pandemic. The Fed officials, including Jerome Powell, have said they do not see negative rates as appropriate in the United States. But so, you know, and why did they come in and and cut that rate right in the middle on a Sunday afternoon? Remember that? And the Dow fell 4,000 the next day. I think they created more problems. But investors now are seeing a much worse outcome for the COVID-19 led downturn that will force the Fed to get even more experimental with their crisis responses. Anything is possible now. We are in uncharted territory as far as the U.S. economy goes, says Tom De La Joma, Managing Director of Seaport Global Holdings in New York. Fed fund futures have begun pricing in a slightly negative rate environment beginning in December. The U.S. Central Bank cut interest rates to zero in March and has launched numerous programs designed to shore up markets and backstop the economy and help states survive as growth is sputtering. San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank President Mary Daly said yesterday the Fed still has tools to boost the economy, a.k.a. a printing press. The Fed is viewed as reluctant to cut rates into negative territory due to concerns it may not be effective in stimulating growth and because it may disrupt the large U.S. money markets. In other words, if you hide money in a money market, you're going to have to pay them. How about that one? The break the buck. I don't even, I, I don't know, how, how do you re- respond to if that? they break the buck, it's just done. They I mean, it, so. you, you start looking, uh, we had Class 8 truck orders. So that's your semis, you know, your bigger capacity trucks out there. Everything has been canceled, according to the truck, uh, the Class 8 truck drivers. Everything. It's the worst sales in Class 8 trucks in decades. And again, more layoffs coming there now, right? This is an industry you don't normally think of. Hertz and Avis. Now, Hertz, I was getting ready to file bankruptcy. Avis now has told automakers they have canceled all orders for vehicles for those two. And, and again, this is just the start. You're going to hear the same thing from all the other big rental enterprise and all the others are going to be following suit. They're all canceling these orders. And and you start thinking about the the ramifications and the snowball effect on all of these things. And, and the, the factory workers are supposed to go back to work in Michigan. If they make it, I don't know if they're, uh, there's no cars there in Michigan, but at least the truck and SUVs are supposed to start firing back up. But... You know, rental car, but that was a huge piece of the business. The 2020 mark, the 2020 cars, American cars are done. That's it. And that, they'll, when, when they get it going again, it'll be 2021. And, and I'm looking at the Dow's up 300 points. We've just had the worst jobless number ever. An unemployment claim that they say is 14.7. That's missing 10 million people, by the way. That And they know it. Yeah, they tried to hammer metals this morning. It's the usual deal but you know i told you everything's going to go up just get used to it we're heading into inflation and then it's going to manifest itself into hyperinflation and again just look at the business you're going to stay open 20 dollar dinner 60 bucks okay 
uh, $200 ticket to Disneyland. If you got the money, you got the unemployment, 600 bucks Or close. Either right. or get government sub- subsidies or close. This is your only option. If you can only run in a third capacity, you have to adjust the pricing. And, and, and the problem is you can't shrink the business because then you got even less capacity. Because if you're running at a third capacity, what do you do? Well, let me find a building that's only got a third of the size to keep keep my cost down. You can't do that because then you, all of a sudden your capacity gets cut even more. So you're right. I think that's the only way out. How about this? They said the uh, NFL is going to open September 20th. What do you think? You want to you want to make a bet on that? <laughs> Again, it's Jack Daniels Friday. I don't think <laughs> I can answer that. Uh, and. Uh, Listen, I just want to be tell you. Be still on the air come Monday. If you're going to be a Patriot Radio News Hour fan and, and partake in the tinfoil nation, and when you hear the music playing like when you were a kid and the Lone Ranger would come on the radio and you'd put your cowboy hat and your mask on and you'd start running around the room on your wooden horse going, it's coming on, it's coming on now. If you're out in Sun City and your neighbors are running around with tinfoil helmets, Patriot Radio's coming on, okay? It's, you'll have to understand... That breakfast is the most important drink of the day on Friday. (laughs) I see you out there. You also made foil swords. We'll be back after these messages. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily broadcast from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a national volunteer organization founded by Phyllis Schlafly, and continuing to uphold her legacy by honoring family values, opposing radical feminism, and representing a conservative perspective in our nation's capital. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. It's a sad day in America when outspoken Christians are vilified for bending over backwards to help our nation in a crisis. At one of President Trump's coronavirus briefings, he invited Mike Lindell to say a few words. You might know Mike as the spokesman for his MyPillow company. He built MyPillow from the ground up as an American company manufacturing all their products right here in America. When COVID-19 hit, Mike took it upon himself to shift 75% of his company's production to make masks for healthcare workers. President Trump called Mike up to the podium to talk about his work in the hopes that other companies would hop on board with this patriotic act of sacrifice. However, Mike Lindell didn't limit his comments to masks. He told the American people, quote, I encourage you to use this time at home to get back into the word, to read our Bibles and spend time with our families, with our great president, vice president and this administration and all the great people in this country praying daily. We will get through this and get back to a place that's stronger and safer than ever. End quote. Mike Lindell's selfless actions and words of encouragement should have been applauded by everyone, no matter your political leanings. Instead, having the audacity to ask for prayer triggered the constantly offended snowflakes on the left. They took to Twitter and mocked him mercilessly. Morning Joe co-host Mika Brzezinski said, Is that the My Pillow guy? Do I need to turn the volume up? I was waiting for the doctors. Tom Nichols sarcastically chimed in, Imagine my relief that the MyPillow guy is on the job. What these media nitwits don't seem to remember is that Mike Lindell wasn't up there because President Trump just loves his amazing pillows. He was up there because he went above and beyond the call of duty to help his nation in this time of need. Mike Lindell's patriotism and Christian charity led him to sacrifice so that thousands of Americans might have a chance to live. If that's triggering to you, how can you call yourself an American? This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Political correctness is no longer simply about restricting speech. This tool for tyranny has led to employees being fired, pastors silenced, small businesses closed, and truth suppressed. Thankfully, the politically correct can't censor the work at phyllisschlafly.com. Join us, won't you, at phyllisschlafly.com. And thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. You're listening to Voice of Reason in a World Gone Mad, the Patriot Radio News Hour. Thanks for tuning in. One of the longest-running financial broadcasts in America today. Banned in China. The minute I knew we were banned in China, I knew we were on the right path. I think we're getting jammed as well. We're having been having broadcast issues. They've been trying to work on them. Hopefully they got it fixed. I know a couple shows this week have uh, had some holes in them, and uh, 
I really don't know why or what's happening. And I think it's because I'm getting very close to the truth that uh, they're just going to try to paper and monetize this economy. They're going to print into oblivion. And by the way, we set a record in April. First time ever, ever, ever. I'll say one more time, ever. Added one trillion of debt in less than one month. So six weeks, one point five trillion. Yeah, but one trillion in twenty eight yeah. days. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that. No, it's it's incredible. And again, we're going to do it again in May. I mean, right? We're we're already over twenty five trillion, and so you know, go thirty days from today, we're probably at twenty six trillion, and twenty days or thirty days later, twenty seven trillion. I mean. There's still delay in the stimulus, too. After weeks of more delay and another round of stimulus cash, it's set to go out again, finally reach some lower-income families who desperately want to know the whereabouts. Um, they're saying that it's still not out. The first the first wave is still not out completely. They're working on it. So, But, again, I mean, I'm not going to pick at anybody. The government's inept as it is and to try to, uh, you know, put, put this into action and, they're really good at taking money. They've got that down. You know, the government's really good at taxing, sales tax, income tax, all that. I mean, you, you, the minute you spend it, it's gone. But to get it back the other way seems to be taking a little bit. So what are they going to do with income taxes? I mean, they're so far they've just ju- they've basically just completely discredited the entire U.S. financial system. Um, there are no checks and balances anymore. They just at will have a vote, bang. Federal Reserve, fed, you know, fractional banking, bang. The money doesn't exist. It's all debt. Why go through the effort of even collecting sales tax or well, or, or income tax? You're bringing up a so, great point, right? So, so you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, I mean, we're already adding, you know, five hundred billion dollars every other week, right? right? That's kind of the average, right? So that's uh, two hundred and fifty billion dollars a week. Why charge any tax? Yeah, well, why? Right? Let's just get rid of it all. Just get rid of it. So. Well, if they're going to bail out the states and cities need it, but how about income tax? If you're sitting there and you're telling me $25 trillion doesn't matter and, and $30 trillion doesn't matter, then that, then does $40 trillion matter or $50 no. trillion matter or $100 trillion matter? Is there a possibility July 15th the president says don't worry about any income taxes this year? I think that's going to happen. I think it might happen. I, I think it's going to because the, the, the problem is far more dire than they're le- letting you be. Right. Letting you believe all these people, 33 million people aren't coming back to work come 4th of July. That's not to, what's going to happen. He wants to suspend payroll taxes and capital gains taxes, which obviously is the, you know, the employers. Well, are, you're right. You, right. you know, I'll do the payroll right. tax for the, 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 the little guy. And then, of course, I got to give the, the billionaires, I got to give them their break. We'll suspend that one as well. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that it's just an ollie, ollie, ollie income free. And, and, and again, Taxes account for personal taxes, okay, for, from from you and I, probably $2.4 trillion, somewhere between 2 and $2.5 trillion. The rest of it is, is corporate-type taxes and, and other taxes, right. uh, tariffs, things of that nature. So why not? Right. Well, okay, let's let's just add another $2, two three trillion to the debt and no one pay a tax. Well, we're going to do it anyway. So I mean, they're going to have they've got another two trillion dollar stimulus coming before the month is out, okay, and this is where we got pension funds and cities and states. And this is this is a big one, probably three trillion. So why not just go? So now, oh God, everybody's got to pay taxes. You just go, no, God. If I was running for president, we're going to have tax forgiveness year. Matter of fact, whatever you paid in taxes, we're just going to give it. Pay. Not only do you not pay, have to right. pay them, if you paid it, you get it, you back. Get it back. Right. right. They did that with the home builders after, uh, because they made so much money in 05 and 06 and 07 that whatever they paid in tax 08, 09, and 10, they got it back. They got it back. All they paid. Only publicly traded home builders, right, by the way. Right, yeah, yeah. If you're, uh, if you're Joe Jake went construction, you're not getting nothing. Let me ask you, how bad is the economy and how bad is the world? We're going to find out. Because don't forget that the Ford was supposed to come out with the Ford Bronco. You know me, I'm a car guy. And let's not forget the new 1,000-horsepower electric Hummer from GM. You think that's still coming? I don't know. Because that was, you know. Well, my guess is, to your point, and, and it's brilliant. Because when you look at it, let let's just see where oil is today. So, uh, yeah, oil's at back at $24. But to your point, 
Look at what's going on with Tesla stock and, and all these other things. Lead you to believe that you're absolutely right. Crude oil's going to $100 or $200 a barrel. Right. So, they so, all know it. So they can get the electric stuff going and all that stuff. I think that's, that's right on. It could on. be the end. Ford, you know, GM, and this is an inside thing. This is here locally. I don't know. But locally, one of my car buddies says that all the GM and GMC lots are running out of cars. Because production stopped, what, 45 days ago, and now they've got five-year or, or seven-year financing interest-free that people are buying them, and there's no nothing to replace them. And the factories are shut off in America. You know, Ford's retooled and making what? What are they making? Ventilators. ventilators yeah. And GM's making uh, I, who God knows what, and Honeywell's now a textile mill. So. Well, they can just go down to Sky Harbor. Okay. Go oh, to get the, the rental go, car. Go to the parking garage, right? We got cars all over the place yeah, over there. Yeah, that's right. I forgot right? Get, the, get in there the and just drive them, drive them to the dealership. Whew, I was worried about that. So, All right. Well, the world's getting ready for negative rates here in America, and long-term mortgage rates are sitting up still at 3.26% this week, up from 323 last week. How you can have interest rates rising, I'll never know. And they're... There's an issue they're starting to talk about, and that is, of course, the banks. The banks are doing the same thing that they did in 08, tightening the screws. So so they said mortgage rates went up. The, the they rate, went up. They went up. Now, it's funny, that? the two-year note yesterday we told you was an all-time record low, 0.14%. 0.14. Today right. we hit a new all-time record low, 0.1. 1. 0.1. 1. 0.1. So we're not quite negative yet on the two-year instruments, uh, but again, I went to public school. Is that is that is that ten percent of one percent? Is that what it is? That is one tenth. One tenth of one. Oh well, yeah, the di- the digit. Yeah, so one tenth. That's the interest you get. That's the interest. So if you put a hundred thousand in that bond, you earn a penny in two years. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> or is it a full dollar? I don't know. <laughs> I got you can pick out a Ferrari too. You, I guess you so. get ten bucks on a thousand. You get ten bucks on a thousand. Right. Okay. You sure about that? So a hundred grand. No, on ten thousand. On ten thousand. Yeah, there you go. Ten bucks on okay. ten thousand. So you get a hundred bucks on a hundred grand in two years. Letting the government use your money. That's a good buy. Goodbye house. <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> goodbye wife. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right everybody relax. Give me a shot of Jack. We got a chicken sandwich here somewhere. Maybe we just still have the chicken running around. It could have been left over from last week. Patriot Radio News Hour. Woo! Rocking and firing this morning. Stay with us. We're really glad you're here. Patriot Radio News Hour. Jack Daniels, Friday, May 8th, 2020. God bless everybody. Thank you. We're going to make it through a week. We're still alive. We're all still alive. You're listening. My heart goes out. People have lost family in this pandemic and... You know, I mean, it's just unbelievable what's happening, isn't it? I got a, just got a text on the air from one of our broadcasters in Colorado, Brian with a Y, and he says, talking about role-playing with tinfoil helmets and tinfoil swords, there's something called LARP. It's an acronym, L-A-R-P. It stands for Live Action Role-Playing. It's a form of hey, role- this is a family show here. Come right, on. Well, come on. You can do it, so... Now, if you want to dress up like Eric, okay, you need to get a big Viking tinfoil helmet and a sword and then put a picture of Patrick Swayze. Now, Joe, you can <laughs> just grab, just get a, a Shrek mask and put it on, <laughs> and you guys can fight each other out in the 57th Avenue up the street here. So. There you go. Well, you know what's so funny? I got a text from the Sheriff, Sheriff Reams up there in Well County. He wants to know what comes after trillion. Quadrillion. Quadrillion. So... And that's interesting. I meant to bring that up. I had a customer uh, call us the other day, and I was talking with a nice couple, him and his wife. I forgot to talk about that yesterday. So quadrillion. Quadrillion. Which is what the U.S. economy will get to. We'll get to a quadrillion. It'll be government funded. Is that a... we got to be close Is now. that followed by a shuba de or... I don't know what's after that. So quadrillion is what? Help me out. That's a hundred thousand trillion? I don't know. I think it is. By it's tough. And it's just tough. We got, do we got to get all new calculators after that? Were, I mean, you, yeah. I mean. Were you hanging out with Johnny Hopkins in math class? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. 
listen, we got to talk about this. President Donald Trump has railed against several figures, including Obama and uh, uh, who else? Biden and all these guys against, and several figures involved in what he called the Russian hoax for several years. Yeah, uh, Obama, Vice President, presumptive 2020. Presidential Biden, blah, blah, he said, being aware of the efforts to take down the President of the United States. What you've seen so far is incredible, especially as it relates to President Obama, because if anyone thinks that he and sleepy Joe Biden didn't know exactly what was going on, you've got another thing coming. Listen, this goes back to, like, the Patriot Act, and this goes back to, remember the audits, anybody that the Democrats didn't like, and you had the wrong name, uh, Patriot, us, we were part of that whole deal, right. they were auditing The Patriot you, audit, right, right. right, if you were free, if you had uh, Tea Party, Republic, right. anything, anything like that, right. you are getting audited, this was more of the same, and this was inside of our government, inside of the FBI and the CIA, and essentially coming out and, and going after great American citizens and, and just destroying them, yeah, publicly man. destroying them and spreading lies. And then, of course, you know, we found out uh, most of this stuff was just made up. What they did to Michael Flynn is unbelievable that that could happen here in America. Unbelievable. So, and Trump said most people knew it, and really most of the people knew it from the beginning, and they knew the whole thing was a total hoax, the whole Russian thing. And, I mean, think how does CNN go on? How do these reporters, republics, how does the Washington Post go on after this? They come out and they said, yep, the whole thing. Was I mean, a lie. You, 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 we made it up. You think about what happened with Watergate and Nixon and all of that stuff, and now today, uh, the exact opposite, right? Nothing's happened, right? Nobody, nobody's gone to jail. Nobody's under arrest. Nobody's, uh, nobody's being prosecuted. Oh well, gee, okay, you caught us. Oh, we're not even going to say we're sorry. Well, Trump also tore into the mainstream media. Several figures involved in this case, including House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, former Director of National Intelligence James Claffer, ex-FBI Director James Comey, former CIA Director John Brennan, and others. They were all in on it. They all knew it was right. a lot. All of them. Well, they're standing on TV. They got cars. They got all. You got to testify. You got to do this. The whole thing based on a lie. Unbelievable. I mean, the president, the president, you know, the they should just automatically I mean, give him that, four more years, you, which would, they might would, do wouldn't anyway. You have called that right, trying to uh, at least assass- Really, it was an assassination attempt on the president. Yeah, it just it wasn't about hey, we're going to kill him, but we're going to try to get him out of office. Right? They tried to to circumvent our, our republic. Well, that's the issue, you know that. Uh, now the, coro- the coronavirus isn't that is- treason? I mean, isn't this what it is? Well, this is the question. This is why the the coronavirus has become political as well. Because you have to ask: if Obama was president, would this even have got any press? Okay, would it have got the press? Right. Because would all we, the, the other would they pandemics did shut down the economy. They wouldn't have shut anything down, and it wouldn't be on CNN, and it wouldn't be on anywhere. Wouldn't be on anywhere, and you just have these people. How many deaths do we have in the country? Seventy-five thousand. Seventy-five thousand. I mean, how many died from the Who knows? the, the, the right. one that we had? And then, you know, then you so, get uh, that one was Melinda Gates coming out on on the idiot box. I give the president a D minus. You shut down the whole dang country. I know it's crazy. So now they're saying, you know what? Though they did ask Doctor Burks yesterday that you know the CDC guidelines they'd put forth for all the states. Yeah. They asked her, point blank, point blank, have any of the states met the criteria to open that you put forth a month ago? She didn't answer. She said yeah, counties. Yeah. Some counties have. But the answer is, is simple, no. Right. Because we, yeah, we the requirements had. they put forth, I mean, essentially we wouldn't open again for like another five years. Right, ever. So now, you know what you think, everyone? How about airports? Airports need a bailout. Of course they do. There's no one there. So there's nobody. They're asking for $10 billion, which, again, this is just for a little bit. You know, I wonder if the rental car's got to pay the $25 a day to park the cars at the parking garage like we did. I wonder if they're going to have a used plane auction. Hey, but all right, put her on the door. i got a 1972 747 Boeing jumbo jet. <laughs> this, is a, $5 this is a 737 Max. Uh, <laughs> you can't fly it, but how would you like to turn it into your vacation home? <laughs> You can live off the grid in this 737 Max. Can you imagine if you won a contest at Disneyland? Yes, you get to fly in the germ tube. <laughs>
All expenses paid. Uh, no, no, thank you, sir. I, uh, I think I'll go camping. Anyway, ten billion to the airports. Keep them going. The bailout, the next bailout, the next stimuli is going to be a whopper. Nancy Pelosi is going to be driving the bus if she ever comes back to work. That's why we can't have a revolution because we can't get the day off. Final segment on a Friday. We'll be back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Patriot Trading Group on a Jack Daniels Friday. Man, there, we, we talk about it. there's so much news you can't really get through it all. Uh, but this morning we've been working really hard. Uh, yesterday we told you. All the gold disappeared again, right? We had gold. Remember, gold. Uh, what was it? Wednesday, the the fake flush out. Gold's gold's going down, and and all the gold disappears. And of course, it comes comes roaring back. It was up forty dollars yesterday. Uh, right now, gold's just kind of hanging out here. And right now, gold's down about six bucks today on the great jobless numbers uh, that came out of the government. But we were able to do some work. I actually had to put Eric on it because Eric's been around a lot longer than I have. He's got a few more contacts uh, in the Rolodex, and he made a few phone calls, and we have an item today. I I couldn't believe it. First of all, uh, I'm in awe of your awesomeness. Thank you. um, Because there's really, there's not gold out there. The circulated gold's gone. The XFs, the VFs, all of it's gone. The good stuff's hard to get. But you got... Some AU, which are almost uncirculated, $5 Liberty gold pieces. Now, normally, obviously, the higher the grade, the more you pay. But this is not how we like to do it here at Patriot Trading Group. Plus, the smaller you go. Well, the sm- yeah, the, the higher you go and the smaller you go, the more it costs. Uh, but our, our regular $5 Liberties, which we can't, I can't even get, get any, would be $575. We've got AU5 lips, so you're going up three grades, you know, almost uncirculated. So these are almost gradable type coins. They're not 575, they're not 565, they're not 550, they're 525 dollars today. For less, you mean? Less, higher quality for less money? For a lot less money. You're talking 50 bucks a coin. Now, how much less. does it take to make a 20 out of the five? Four of them, right? Four, four fives. Four or five dollars. So they're, five. Quor- they're just the quarter ounce pieces, right? Right. So, okay. And, and at five and a quarter, that brings your total to $2,100 if you bought four of them. An AU20 is $2,178. So you're looking at the fact that you can get four fives for less than a 20. It's incredible value. Excellent. Ne- it never happens. Excellent. It never happens. Very nice. Hard to find incremental material like this. Allows you to function. When we construct portfolios for people, we put them together under the auspices that you may have to use them. That's why everything is legal tender that we handle and what we recommend. So you've got a material here. It's quarter ounce gold piece. Now, that could be a doctor bill. Uh, That could be a large... I don't know, a grocery bill, a a generator generator or something. So great incremental gold. Keep pace with the destruction of the currency. How much are they, Joe? Five and a quarter. For AU. For AU $5 Liberties. This is by far the cheapest price for a $5 gold piece. Forget about great. The cheapest price on a $5 gold gold piece that I've seen in eight weeks here. We got 100 of them, too. If you want to buy all 100 for $52.5, we'll, uh, if you buy all 100, we'll take the five off. How about that? Now, there's a buy. <laughs> what five are we talking about? The uh, Not the first five. Oh, okay, all right. The second five. <laughs> Yes, I'd like to adjust your price a little. What would you like to take off? A zero. <laughs> AU, U.S. Liberty, 1866 to 1907. $5 gold pieces. Quarter ounce. Takes four to make a 20. Great buy today. High quality material at five and a quarter. Call us 1 800 951 And then you can resume back to what you were doing and enjoy your weekend. On behalf of Joe Jake, one paper radio news hour, all American gold. Yeah,